How would you I feel always... about a podcast, but with like multiple people? Man, Snow West is gonna kill you. How dare you say Lost Paradise <laughs> is a good game? How's it going, people? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we have a special guest, Gokudoni, a fellow Yakuza YouTuber, and we're gonna be talking about different topics that have popped up lately uh, within the community, and we'll just be chilling. So grab a popcorn or a coffee or water, whatever you want to grab, and just snack away while you listen to us just ramble. How are you doing, Gokudoni? Exceptionally well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> good to hear, good to hear. So, uh, tell me a bit about yourself. So, I... Well, as far as the YouTube channel in particular goes, I predominantly do character analyses and general discussion pieces, usually on Yakuza, but also sometimes on series like Tekken, Metal Gear, Devil May Cry, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, that's basically all there is to it. Hey, There's I also mean, like music and all that, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> straight to the point. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, so, when did you start playing Yakuza games? Hmm. Well, playing them, it would be 2020. Mm -hmm. But actually getting into the series, which is a really convoluted story that's comparable to something like the plot of Yakuza 5, honestly. But Honestly, basically... honestly you can just say it. We have all the time in the world. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, to, to kind of try and oversimplify it, I live in Southeast Europe, specifically mm -hmm. Croatia. And mm -hmm. if you've heard any kind of misconceptions or memes about us, like it's an impoverished country or people are very behind the times. I hate to be the guy to say it, but it's very, very accurate. Or at least it was back in 2008, which was mm -hmm. when I first heard of the Yakuza series. Mm -hmm. So basically, I have I found a gaming magazine that had a really detailed um, review on the then upcoming Yakuza 2 for the PS2. And uh -huh. I was just blown away with the actual review to the point where I, upon reading like the first two passages, I ran to my closest game store, which is the only store that we had in town, mm -hmm. and basically just said, okay, can you please give me anything Yakuza related? And that poor girl couldn't have been more confused. What, did they not have it in the store? Or? She had no idea what Yakuza was. She, she oh. literally said, what's a Yakuza? And at that point, I was just like, oh, okay, I'm beyond helping, aren't I? Just, just tell her Japanese GTA, boom. They all know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'm pretty sure they would have had Yakuza Fury and not the actual Yakuza in store, but mm -hmm. the, the lack of availability is something that has persisted to this day in the region that I'm from. So, quite literally, for 12 years, I kind of waited until I could have hardware that could run a digital copy, which mm -hmm. wound up being my, my laptop that I currently use for the recording, and thanks to COVID, I finally had an you know, kind of point where mm -hmm. I could properly start my deep dive into Yakuza. Because at that point, I would still studied up on all of the lore, like mm -hmm. it's a video, like a book series. Yeah. And once I finally got to the game, it was just like, okay, I remember what the Tojo clan is, I remember this substory, blah, 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 and it's all clicked into place. And that's kind of how I got into it. I see. So what was your first Yakuza game then? Um... Actively playing wise, it was zero. Zero, right? So that's the first one you played from start to finish. Yes, and the first platinum, which definitely set a precedent for the rest of my experiences. I saw your video about the platinums, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I'm thankful I didn't go for any platinums other than the Arcus Zero because uh, it gave me a taste for what to expect, and I didn't want any more. Um, <laughs> Pretty much. And so, so wait, you you said in your video that you tried to platinum all of the games, right? Uh, correct. Right. And you did give up on some of the games, if I remember right, like uh, Kurohio 2? Or uh, was it one? Yeah. Uh, it was the second one, because, I mean, if you want to count it as a platinum, there's a huge asterisk there, because it's yeah. kind yeah. of a built-in set of achievements. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, that, um, I mean, I, I adore that game, but please, who who thought to glitch it out that poorly, even in the regular <laughs> version? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think, unfortunately, Koda here too just has issues that uh, aren't just related to that uh, 
to the collection of the trophies. I'm pretty sure you've seen how tough the sweet enemies are, right? Oh my god, your edits of that still made me like... I, I was tearing up with laughter when you showed that one fight against the Yakuza dude, and it was like 20 minutes long. I, I, you know, I still need to make a video about it. I was planning to make a video about that. I still haven't. Um, <laughs> just just picture this. Oh, you hate Yakuza 3? Check out this Yakuza game. Because, <laughs> like, Yakuza 3 gets a lot of smack from people. And, like, I understand why it does. Um, hmm. Compared to other games, you don't have as many options to deal with, you know, uh, blocking. You have the tiger drop if you, you know, uh, actually go out of your way to get that. But I don't think it's incredibly tough to get... But even then, it's just, I think it's a matter of not having as many options as other games. And something also really weird about Yakuza games. Like, you have people saying, oh, just grab. And the thing <laughs> about grabs is uh, it's an option until it's not. You get to a point in fights <laughs> where, it, like, th they just don't let you grab them. Um, exactly. <laughs> and it's not like an issue of one Yakuza game, like Yakuza 3. It's like... And pretty much all the Yakuza games, and it's annoying. Pretty much. The, the, there are certain characters that will just refuse after a while, but... I mean, at least with Yakuza 3, I can give it the credit of being a game that kind of tests your fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you've gotten into it from OG 1 and 2 on the PS2, you wouldn't have as much trouble with it. But if you go mm -hmm. from it from Zero and the Kiwamis, then yeah, because those are so more beginner-friendly, and then you're like, okay, but why does my exact same combo that I keep repeating 50 times over not work for some reason? <laughs> yeah, no, because like also if you play original 1 and 2, you're going to see the progression from those to 3. But then if you play mm. 0 or Kiwami and then you go back to 3, it's going to feel like a major step down. I think for most people at least, maybe not everyone. But uh, Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, talking about Yakuza 3 aside, um, let's actually... <laughs> Move on to, well, talking about the topics we want to talk about today. So, me and Gorkodoni initially wanted to make this podcast to talk about topics with mixed reception, especially uh, recent ones. We're going to put some um, timestamps in the description, and you can just jump into whatever you want if you want to do that, or you can just watch everything. So we're going to be talking about, first of all, the lack of a physical release for Gaiden. And then we're going to move on to the whole New Game Plus uh, debacle. And then, finally, we're going to move on to the um, controversial <laughs> English dub. Uh, especially, you know, everything with Young Gear and all that. But uh, we'll see how that goes. And then, I think that's pretty much everything we're going to cover for this podcast. I'm sure we're, we're going to have a lot to uh, talk about anyway. Um, <laughs> so... Let's start with the uh, topic of physical releases with uh, Gaiden. Um, oh boy. What? So, uh, can I start? By all means. This is something that I've unfortunately seen kind of, I don't know if I should say backfire, but it came off as an earnest attempt from people who, you know, prefer physical releases. And so they would voice those um, concerns and opinions in comments for like, um, Yakuza posts on social media and then it turned into something of you know just kind of a hate train between people who don't mind digital and people who really want a physical release for Gaiden and are worried for the future and right. it's a real shame seeing that because I feel like I know this is going to sound cheesy as hell but, but at the core we all love Yakuza games right um, exactly but you know it just I I'm not really gonna attribute to, attribute this to a certain um, group of people because I don't think it's really the fault of anyone. It's more so just probably the way people word stuff, maybe that might come across the wrong way. But I think with topics like this, it's really important to be persistent to get the idea across. What do you think, Okudoni? Well, specifically with this release, it's kind of hard to talk about it without going into the territory of, you know, digital versus physical, even though we do technically have a physical release mm -hmm. in, in Asia, but that's kind of its own can of worms, if you will. Mm -hmm. With with this one in particular, my, my biggest concern was the fact that a lot of people started writing the game off, because there are a lot of people, like you said, that are very loyal to physical copies exclusively, 
And then when you see a game that's showing as much promise as Gaiden kind of be pushed under the rug because of some unfortunate timing and unfortunate decisions, I feel like you you push yourself in a situation where you approach it from a more diplomatic standpoint and mm -hmm. you're still gonna get a ton of shit because, you know, people will just want to hate on it because, oh, there's trouble in a community that's usually kind of chill about their stuff. Let's add more to it. Which is just a shame because I'm sure, like, both sides most likely have the best intents. Um, people, like, a lot of people are used to just collecting uh, the physical release of whatever game they love. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, mm. And then, you know, the, the conversation of preservation, like, game pre preservation comes up. And of course. I, I think, you know... The, the degree to which people care about that varies. Some some people are like, oh, well, it's like it's gonna vanish from the from PSN. Like in a hundred years, we're not gonna be alive then, or something like that. <laughs> which is, I mean, fair hey, point. fair enough. But what if I want to leave the game to my grandkids so that they see what made this uh, franchise so good? Okay, I, I know mm. that's a bit ridiculous, but um, no, like trust me, because it is. It's funny that you mentioned that because I feel like my way of looking at it is also kind of on the cheesy side, but it feels like material heritage of gaming as a culture. Yeah. Because I do have, like, I have a degree, well, one of my degrees at least, in culture, so I do look at it from a bit more of a widespread standpoint. But when you consider how, for example, the Silent Hill series, how it's basically impossible to have physical mementos on them because of how overpriced everything is on the secondary market and the nature me. of the actual codes. I mean, <laughs> I wanted to buy OG Silent Hill 2 and then it was like for a few hundred dollars, like the lowest price. And this is without the shitty custom charges that we have here in Croatia. And it's just like, I want to play the game the way it was intended, please. Yeah, no, I, I it's hard to disagree with that. Um... <laughs> I, you know, I managed to get one copy of a Silent Hill game, Silent Hill 3 for the PC. I managed to find it for, a, like, a relatively decent price. Like, it's not the best, but, you know. I found a copy, mm -hmm. I think. It's like a physical PC copy for Silent Hill 3 um, for, like, $100. Ooh. It's used. That's a bargain. That's yeah, a fucking bargain. It's used, but it's in very good shape. And, uh, and yeah, li like, you know, the, the whole topic of digital and physical... <sighs> I get not really caring about that. I mean, if I'm being honest, at first I was like, man, that sucks with Gaiden. Um, <laughs> but then I figured, okay, what if Gaiden is just going to be like a major, major, major asset flip? Maybe if that's the case, it's not going to matter much. And then what do we get? One of the best games of the franchise. <laughs> and <laughs> Quite literally. Just thinking about that, it's just a big shame that it doesn't have, like, you know, a... A form that you can preserve for whatever uh, purposes that you would like to keep it for. Okay, I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent because I feel like it's re Please. relevant in this point. Please go. So, very recently, I've decided to test how customs in my country function because we've had some political differences in the past few years that should have made the process of obtaining games from Japan a bit easier on the wallet. Mm -hmm. Turns out it really wasn't because I purchased a lot of OG PS3 Yakuza games, Japanese copies specifically, because mm -hmm. they, they really care about their packaging. I was just going through the actual booklets and it's like, this is a work of art. Why, why wouldn't someone want this? Yeah. And then, in actually getting it here, like, after I'd already paid um, the cost, uh, sorry, not customs, I've paid the actual shipping and the price of the listing and uh, taxes, I still had to pay an additional 35% for customs to do nothing with my package, basically. It only wound up getting here in a somewhat beat-up state. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, still, it was packaged It was packaged pretty well from the person in Japan. But to kind of get back onto Gaiden, if you wanted to get a proper copy here, you run the risk of, number one, probably purchasing it as if it was three copies and not one in regards to the actual money. Mm -hmm. And then you miss out on things like, do you know there's a copy of Gaiden that is packaged with a pen? Is that one of the collector editions somewhere? Yes. Can, I think I'm, can you I might imagine have seen the it. irony? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the irony. Fucking, the man who raised his name. I know what we need. We need a pen. Let's write it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I've seen the collector editions for Gaiden. There's, like, I think a couple. I think there's one in... Um, was it Taiwan? I can't remember. Mm, I think so. And Singapore, perhaps. Yeah, and then there's one in Japan as well. The one in Japan had, I think, a couple of, like, acrylic stands that um, you could light them up. And then there's a Ooh. wallet with it. And... What else was there? There was something related to a gadget with the Japanese Collector Edition. I can't remember what it was. But um, one of the other editions also had a flask, which I find really cool. Uh, oh my god, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> the last time they did that was with the Yakuza Zero uh, in Japan as well. They had a flask with that with Majima Mr. 2 on it. And I actually happened to have that. So I'm glad I bought that. <laughs> That's awesome. I feel like they really, really undermine, or not undermine, underestimate <clears throat> the interest of people in the West to actually purchase all of that stuff. Oh, so yeah. if anyone from Sega is watching this, yes, we want to purchase it, but please. we don't want to go bankrupt over it, so please. Please, yes. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, everyone at this point knows that uh, Yakuza is something that isn't just a niche franchise anymore. Maybe some people still think it is, but it's really not. I think it's safe to say it's one of Sega's uh, bigger games at this point. Um, there's a lot of hype around these games every time um, a new one is announced. And, you know, I, I just really miss collector editions. Uh, the last one we had was with the Yakuza 6, I believe, the uh, After Hours edition. Do you have that, by the way? Oh, I wish I had, because I'm already a bit of a whiskey fan. So when I saw that they were selling, like, what people thought were just dice or cubes or whatever no they're actually whiskey rocks because they yeah. have the liquid in there and yeah that was such a cool addition for me especially <laughs> with how much liquor kid you tends to drink in that particular game yeah and like no you can't find this anymore at least not for a fair price you know really damn because i you know i remember <laughs> uh i think they didn't sell out quick so they kept uh putting them on sale for a while and oh, God. I, yeah i know it's depressing to think about but that's what I remember, and then I can't really... I didn't keep up with it enough to know when it sold out, and then when people started scalping the prices of that. But it's just mm -hmm. sad to hear about. There's also an edition in Japan, I believe, where it also came with a couple of, like, uh, whiskey glasses, and they were actually different. Um, and I think those are probably going to be more expensive. So, uh... Yeah, that, probably. <laughs> yeah, that, that is not a... A very encouraging thought. And yeah, so would you would you agree that well, how do I put this? What do we even want to ask at this point about physical releases? It's just it's just really sad about Gaiden. Um I think it's one of the best games, like we said. And I think having a physical release for this game would have gone a long way. Uh, absolutely. And just the idea of like, for example, imagine this. We get more Gaiden games in the future. And then you just have like a dedicated spot on your like gaming shelf just for Gaiden games. I don't know. I think oh, the idea is best. really cool. I mean, at this point, I'm putting my very hopeful face on. I kind of think that if they see the amount of copies that were sold, <clears throat> maybe they'll do like an anniversary reprint. So it's like, oh yeah, kind of like what we had with the, the PS3 case and the remastered collection. So for PS5. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not PS5. Yakuza 5. Yeah. You know what else so was a surprise? Maybe? You actually reminded me of something. A few <laughs> years ago, I'm not sure when exactly this was. I think it was after the re the announcement of Kiwami 2. They actually made copies of the original PS2 games. Like, official production. Um, and it was kind of hilarious seeing scalpers on eBay just kind of like panic and had like they had to lower the prices because i think at the time if you wanted like a ps2 copy of yakuza either one or two you're looking at probably 200 dollars um and yeah. then and then they released these you know newly rerun um copies for like how much was it again 40 dollars i'm not sure but hmm. i'm pretty sure it was but it was a fair pricing and like you said it balanced out the the actual secondary market i'm not sure how heavy it would be for them resource-wise, but again, for Yakuza fans, we would purchase multiple copies of those. It's not just one copy we're talking about. Oh yeah, don't mess with us Yakuza <laughs> fans, we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we have 10 copies of our favorite games. Hell yeah. 
I think I saw <laughs> someone on Twitter who had like every single copy of Yakuza 7, like Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, oh my god, she's awesome. She she does the best fan art on Twitter. Totally not biased, by the way. But Pseudo yeah, Shell, she's right, probably I think? the biggest fan. Am I saying it wrong? Yes. I, I don't know. But you, you're talking <laughs> to a Slav. My grammar is the worst in the country. But you're talking to an Arabic. My pronunciation can be off a lot of the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Aren't we, we a pair? We get by. We get by. We, we speak English 50-50. Close enough, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Pseudo Shell, she makes a lot of great Yakuza art as well. Uh, if you have Twitter, check her out. Um, right, uh, what do we want to talk about next? Is there something we want to say to conclude this segment with physical releases? Uh, well, basically just an expression of... Well, if anyone from Sega is watching this, like, maybe consider it, kind of nudge... Respectfully, Respectfully, not one of your <laughs> one of your superiors, because it's like it, it won't be apparent now. Because I, as as of the time of this recording, I haven't released <laughs> anything on the channel about Gaiden, but I have a video on it that's like thirty plus minutes, and about twenty seven minutes of that are just me gushing how it's one of the best games ever. So <laughs> it it would mean a lot if we got an actual physical release that. Again, wouldn't result in, you know, hundreds of dollars of customs charges being priced so that the money actually goes to Sega and RGG. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole customs things uh, thing actually just reminded me of something. I I have a friend who was importing something. It's it's not it's not a Yakuza game. It's uh, actually a Trails game. I think it was The Ooh. Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie. The Japanese edition at the time. He really wanted to play it. He couldn't wait for the English release, so he bought it. Um... When when the thing arrived at his doorstep, I think Customs also kind of screwed him over. He had to fork over like an extra, what, $20? Something like that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, moral of the story, Customs uh, suck. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the TED Talk. <laughs> our our mixtapes are on the table. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to see physical releases. I think... Uh, and I think I just have, like, one little message for, you know, just the viewers, anyone that's watching this. Um, you know, when you see people pushing for this a lot, they don't mean anyone any harm. It might be annoying because maybe you don't care, but, you know, uh, there are people that bought physical games their whole lives, and they want to keep, like, a physical memento of the games that they love. Or maybe, you know, just in general, game preservation. They want to keep it uh, with them so that they can... Play it for the future, maybe give it to someone so that they can play it as well without having to worry about DRM and just other unfun things. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this. What about you? Mm, pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right. So the next topic is going to be the uh, dreaded topic of New Game Plus. And this one scares oh. me. Same, same. Uh, so we wanted to cover all the cases. Um, the first being with Yakuza 7, and then the Kaito Files, and then Gaiden, and the next is with Infinite Wealth. Um, mm -hmm. Alright, so how about this? I'm gonna talk about... Actually, wait. Okay, I'm gonna talk about 7 and the Kaito Files, and then you talk about Gaiden and Infinite Wealth. How about that? Yeah, that could work. Okay. So, uh, with Yakuza 7... Uh, we, outside of Japan, were very lucky. In Japan, um, people had to buy New Game Plus uh, with actual money. Like, if you buy the game, the base game, New Game Plus was not there. And not only that, but difficulties such as um, Hard and Legend were not accessible. You had to buy the DLC to be able to play those and to also be able to carry over your stuff to a new playthrough, which... I think I, I don't need to say this, but a lot of people didn't like that. And back then, uh, we we still had uh, uh, localized localized releases not coming out on the same time as the Japanese releases. So that was actually a good thing at the time because people complained. Well, complaint makes it sound negative. That's not the intention. People <laughs> pushed back against this to no end. And thankfully, uh, when they announced the English release. They told us that this was not going to carry over to the English release. It's going to be in the base game, which is huge, 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 huge. And this is going to come up later with Infinite Wealth that uh, Gokudoni will talk about. 
And then we also have the Kaito Files. Now, the Kaito Files is probably the one case where you could argue, okay, it's just a DLC, and it's not even that long. It barely has any side content, so there's no need for it. Uh, which, you know, for the most part, I can agree with that. But at the same time, I don't think the game, the, the length of a game should be, like, a, an indicator of whether or not it has New Game Plus. Um, thanks to freaking Separate Ways with Resident Evil 4 Remake, I will never stop thinking about that DLC anymore because it's a $10 <laughs> DLC. Goku only played it. And yeah. it's like a 9 to 10 hour story. It has New Game Plus. It has unlockables. And it's just unbelievable that you're getting all of that for $10. Now, the Kaito Files is for $30. And as much as I enjoyed it, Everyone at this point, I think, knows that I just think it's a tad overpriced, especially when you don't have something that helps you keep the stuff you worked for on a new playthrough. Um, and again, I don't think a game has to be 500 hours for it to warrant New Game Plus. And yeah, um, now when it comes to Gaiden, here's the mic, Gokudoni. <laughs> Thank you. So with Gaiden in particular, I, I very much have an axe to grind because to give some context, my favorite game in the franchise is Yakuza 0. Shocking, I know. But specifically with that game, I've only played through it twice. Mm -hmm. And the specific reason for that is because it has no new game plus. Mm -hmm. Every other game, including Kiwami 2, which, dear god, I'm really, really not a fan of that game. But I've beaten <laughs> it like five or six times because it has new game plus. Mm -hmm. So that should tell you something. because. Gaiden, as I've said, it's e easily became uh, one of my top three games in the series. And it has, I would say, one of the best combat systems in the entire franchise. So the idea that you can't use a, a combat system that's that fleshed out on bosses that were that deliberately designed, especially the final boss, dear mm -hmm. god, mm -hmm. th the fact yeah. that you can't have that actual full experience unless you quite literally purchase a PC copy and then you hope that mothers do that thing. It's such a disappointing thing because th the amount of quality that's present, you always have that thought in the back of your head where it's like, okay, but how cool would this be if I could style on these guys with the stuff that I've actually unlocked? Yeah. It's It no longer become, becomes a question of um, difficulty balancing because that's kind of its own discussion. But mm -hmm. it's more so like, th this game has the substance to where a new game plus... I mean, this is probably the game that would benefit from it the most out of any game in the series. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Like, it, it genuinely pains me to think about it. Because I've just been re-watching the, the actual cutscenes that I've had of fighting some of the bosses. And I'm like, man, it would be so cool to do this with a fully leveled up serpent. Or, I don't know, the double... Uh, finisher with the mortal reversals and then you're like mm -hmm. yeah but the <laughs> akame points don't level up that much and you only unlock this viable money resource this early in the game or uh, it's infuriating it is uh i think with gaiden especially you know you have a lot to work for if you want to unlock like specific abilities that you want to use in fights and thinking about having to do that all over again on new playthroughs is pretty infuriating um, now, watch us talk about this, and then the English dub update drops a <laughs> new game plus, and then everything Please. we talked about all this time just goes null. It's for nothing, and we look like idiots and clowns. I mean, the topic kind of still stands, because mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, we haven't even mentioned it, but Kiwami 2, the Majima Saga, for example, yes. I would still like a, a new game plus for that, even though it's... Well, the Majima Saga is the Majima Saga. That's, yeah. again, completely different discussion. But yeah. the, the amount of freedom that you have from the added replayability, from genuinely just, you can play through the game within an hour. You can have that blitz of amazing experiences that happened back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And it just remains so fresh in your memory to the point where maybe that replay, that quicker replay without all of the bloat from slowly unlocking everything, will be the thing that pushes you to see something valuable about the game that you mm -hmm. missed out on at that point. Maybe you want to yeah. recommend it to a friend because it's like, oh yeah, you can use, for example, my PlayStation and my copy so you can speed through it and see if it works for you and 
that friend winds up buying every other game. Because yeah. especially nowadays, replayability is something that people don't value as much because everything is so cinematic. And once you beat it, there's really no points to replay it again anytime mm -hmm. soon. But Yakuza isn't like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, thank you for yeah. bringing that up. It reminded me of a couple of things that I uh, heard. Now, thankfully, this is not the majority from what I've seen. And like, you know, an opinion is an opinion. But I did see people, a couple of people saying um, something along the lines of like, oh, good, it shouldn't be included like New Game Plus because this requires an extra trophy and I don't want to go through that trouble. And, you know, Jesus. like, OK, l let's put this opinion aside for a bit. Another opinion that I heard was um, like it's not like something along the lines of I think it's not a ma major loss or whatever and it's like okay let's you know let's assume new game plus is not a much desired feature or like it's not good one of one of the coming days something you care about is going to be taken away um yes and i don't think you're going to enjoy watching that just disappear uh so this is not about <laughs> this is not about forcing people to care about something it's more so looking at a feature that that was prominent in the franchise just suddenly disappearing and you know i think showing concern about that is a very reasonable reaction because who knows maybe in another game something else is going to disappear that would that, you know used to be a staple um and i think yeah. this is something we should talk about it's uh it's a new game plus uh today and tomorrow it might be i don't know costumes or a fighting style oh wait. or a fighting style <laughs> anyway <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> earlier you talked about yakuza 0 i'm assuming you mm -hmm. talked about how you can't start new game plus on legend right uh i'm i'm not even sure if you can do a just a proper new game plus yeah i'm pretty sure you can do new game plus just not on legend and yakuza 0 is the only game that does that which I think, I get the idea, they want you to like go into this super hard mode without having all of your comfort stuff. But at the same time, I don't know, would have been nice. I mean, that's an interesting thing you brought up because, okay, now I know something new about my favorite game. But <laughs> specifically with that, then it kind of brings up a different issue with mm -hmm. Zero that technically also applies to Gaiden. So you remember how the Legend style upgrade tree is just straight up stat boosts and nothing else. Mhm. Mm right. You run the risk of permanently ruining your character that can literally one shot everything if you misuse <laughs> that. Oh yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure what what game I mean, technically you can do a similar thing in Gaiden because you have obviously not as extreme because in Zero you can get to level 999 and here there's like maybe 30 health upgrades and 20 attack upgrades or something. Yeah. But I distinctly remember one game. It, it probably wasn't Yakuza, but they would kind of... Once you go into New Game Plus, they would refund all of the upgrades that you had. They would kind of give you... Let's say if it's like Yakuza 4, they would give you all of the skill orbs. And then mm -hmm. it would be up to you to reinvest them in any way you wanted to. Right. I feel like that would be such an easy solution. So like... Yeah. You go into Guide New Game Plus and they give you, I don't know, a million Akame points and 10 million yen. And then you invest into the stuff that you want. So if you want a blind playthrough, you can do that. If you want to, you know, curb stomp everything to oblivion, you can do that. But I'm not sure how difficult it will be to implement, but it would, it would be a cool idea. Yeah, I'm not a game developer either, but that does sound like a, such a simple, just, you know, press a button and you can just redo everything you want. Maybe you don't like... Uh, the way you fight currently, well, you can readjust all of it uh, to to be more suited to the way you want to play the, this game. I love that idea. I actually don't know why they didn't do that because um, it would not only would it make the games more re replayable, in my opinion. There are going to be builds that come out of that kind of thing. I think if people care enough about that, like oh, Ooh. do a playthrough, for example. Like I don't know, investing only in. Uh, a certain style or like investing in certain abilities as a challenge you know what i mean that's such a yeah so basically going like i don't know the bloodborne variety so i don't know you have this type of build this the rgg these ideas are free but please hire us <laughs> yes yes uh i think we would do a very good job <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> i mean seriously that's such a cool i didn't think of builds but in reality that could work for something like this so i don't know you in the case of 
6 and Kiwami, where you have those very specific mm -hmm. uh, kind of segments, you can only have a base stat upgraded to max, but everything else needs to be at level 1. Or you can have all the moves, but your vitality is at a minimum, and blah blah blah. It, it would just work. Yeah, I think the problem is, uh, in some of the games, there's a lot of stuff that are locked behind prerequisites. So the solution would probably be to remove those prerequisites and just get what you want. I feel like a game like Yakuza 4 did that best. Like, definitely. It did have some prerequisites, like, you know, for the tag draw, for example. But that was a reasonable mm. one because, you know, uh, if you want to get the most OP counter, then get <laughs> these uh, lesser ones. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like, I think just implementing this kind of thing would be awesome. Maybe have it so it's not. I mean, I don't know how easy this would be to implement, I feel like. I'm just gonna talk and talk, and a game developer is gonna watch this and be like, yeah, what the hell is this guy talking about? He thinks it's this easy? Um, I feel <laughs> like something like, you know, um, you do, you can't... There are prerequisites on your first playthrough, but then on the second playthrough, you can remove all those points and just unlock anything you want. It, it definitely gets rid of... I remember one particular example that you had on your channel, which is probably one of the best analogies on Yakuza, where you said in Yakuza 2, to unlock any move, you oh, no. said something on the lines of, oh, you need to go to Bangladesh, talk to this guy, you need to go... That's uh, such a perfect way of describing it. Don't, <laughs> like, don't. I, I, I... Listen. Yakuza 2 <laughs> fans, if you're watching this, like, Yakuza 2 is a great game, but oh my god. Oh, you want the tiger drop? Okay. So instead of remembering that one move you learned in the last game, you have to reach chapter 10 and fight these two tigers. Oh, th that's not all. You fought those two tigers? Okay, good. Well, now uh, go grab a fucking grocery bag full of milk and then take it to this guy uh, sleeping <laughs> on the street and then wake up this guy and then smack him on the face. And then after you do that, you go and visit the acupuncture clinic for some reason, have massage done on you, and then Kiri's like, oh, the tiger drop. Wow, what a move. Now, now I remember. We're literally going the Shenmue 3 route. Now catch these 10 chickens and give me this aged Lao beer and... Uh, or actually wine, my apologies, but why? I'm kind of scared of what you just said because I... If, if that is true, I'm not gonna play Shenmue. <laughs> oh, you can play the first two. Just the third one... I mean, people who love it really love it, but yeah. I feel like three... We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> hey, fair it's just enough. a long story. Fair enough, fair but, enough. Yeah, I mean... Oh yeah, and to kind of add on to what you said about a developer being like, Oh, that's not how it works. Well, mm -hmm. at the very least, we have a conversation going. Because that's kind of the, the crux of this issue, where there are a lot of decisions that are made that just kind of feel confusing. Yeah. And there isn't enough of a... I wouldn't say justification, but kind of context behind it being readily given at least to the West. Maybe they have explained it in a Japanese interview, but clearly we're not you know, so, fluent in the language. We're going to talk about the banding throws in uh, <laughs> Kaiden. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, for those who played, do you know exactly what we're talking about? Why do you need to be in heat mode to use the banding throws? It's so weird. Again, balancing. It, it's one of the few things that this game kind of doesn't do well. Have you tried... This is kind of technically spoilers for some of the side content, but mm -hmm. have you tried the Amon fight? I did, yes. What were your thoughts on it compared to, I mean, the last few that we've had, where it be Lost Judgment or whatever? Okay, honestly, I had help with that fight because I was streaming the whole thing. And yeah. I just told chat, look, if you know what to do, just tell me, I don't care. Um... <laughs> Though the thing is, I didn't spend too much trying to figure out what to do. I was just like, what the hell is this? What's going on? Um, <laughs> and then people told me the gimmick was that uh, you you call drones, and specifically in heat mode, to like combat the drones of, of the guy, and then that's when you can damage him. Yeah, pretty um, much. Which, again, just that's a, another why question, because you have a very specific gimmick and that's it. But yeah. then you compare it to something like Judgment, specifically OG Judgment. Oh, That's boy. <laughs> probably my favorite one in the entire franchise. I'm assuming you said OG Judgment because of the frame drops. And you know what? <laughs> You're goddamn <laughs> right. You're goddamn right. <laughs> I love that so much, actually. It's probably not even intended, but it works so well. Like, 
Um, you wouldn't think I would enjoy playing like on five FPS, but this fight is an exception. Somehow. Oh. I mean, <laughs> please, we're Dead Souls enjoyers. Like, oh, I've tried booting it up on emulator. It had even less frames, and it was beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. I'll say this about the M1 in Gaiden. I did think it was kind of weird how... Well, I mean... Again, maybe it's just because I knew the gimmick. This was after I knew the gimmick. Um, it felt like once you know the gimmick, there's no threat or challenge. Like, as soon as I got the drones taken care of, it... Like, I got... That's it. He, he was defeated. Yeah, um, pretty much. Except for, well, technically there is that absurd amount of health that he gets in, in the last phase if you're kind of being uh, not cautious about it, but... Is that the life-stealing phase? Yeah, and th that's just like... Wh who added this? Because <laughs> I'll say this right now. There's only one boss in video game history that has actually made healing as something that's fun and not infuriating. And that boss is Virgil. No one else managed to do it right. I'm assuming, do you mean the DMC5 fight or another one? I mean, even in 3, which I'm pretty sure if we remember the DMD version is probably enough to give some people nightmares, but even then, <laughs> I feel like it is justified because of how well he's framed, both gameplay-wise and narrative-wise. But mm -hmm. here it's just like, Hello, I am Amon number seven, blah, 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 blah. I have a, an interesting haircut. Here's my gimmick. I have a heart above my head. Cool. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, Why? no. I get the disappointment <laughs> with that. I, I think you're not the only one that I've seen that was kind of underwhelmed. And I, I understand that. Um, personally, I was hoping to get an Amon. Oh, uh, sorry. I was hoping to get Shin Amon to see, like, ah. how Kiryu first meets him. And then they're like, hey, I know this guy uh, in Yokohama. Do you want to go bully him? Yeah, sure, let's go. <laughs> that would have been that so much funnier. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> but credit where it's due, I appreciate that there's a new M1 at least, for what it's worth. I mean, conceptually, like the actual way we meet him and the conversation with him, I thought was really, really cool. Definitely better than what we had mm -hmm. with um, the aftermath of the Lost Judgment M1. But yeah. still, it's kind of th the gameplay. And it feels like we're talking about, oh, we hate all of these things. No, we love these games. It's just yeah, splitting yeah. hairs between favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember, folks, if we talk about stuff we don't like in a game, it doesn't mean we hate the game. Surprise, surprise. Uh, yeah, but we I hate like... it so much that we have five copies of each individual game. That's we, how much we hate them. <laughs> we, we hate it so much, we dedicate so much time into making videos about this franchise and interact with people within this uh, community as well. I don't want to, like, interrupt this topic, but... Uh... We were talking about New Game Plus, and then we talked about Amon. So I mean, uh, balancing again, it's it's all everything is kind of interconnected when it comes to the topic of New Game Plus because it would yeah. fix all the very tiny issues that exist in Gaiden, mm -hmm. and yet it's just it's kind of it feels incomplete. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to Infinite Wealth now. What is it with Infinite Wealth and New Game Plus? Uh, from what I gather. Because at, at this point in time, I haven't pre-ordered it yet. I'm mm -hmm. still debating on whether I should take a gamble on a physical copy that may come here one week later or whatever. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it's kind of similar to what you've described with Yakuza 7, where one of the DLC packages will have it available as kind of a bonus thing with, I believe, the choice of different difficulty settings to adjust it. I actually... Hold on. I need to send you a screenshot that we need mm. to read from. All of this is live, folks. All of this is live, yeah. And if necessary, I'm gonna cut some stuff. But people wouldn't know that, it's just between you and me. No, this is the members only, where we don't censor any of the swear words. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it's only on the Asian website of RGG at the moment. But mm -hmm. if you take a look down here, you'll come across this. Oh my god, wait. Can I just say, big swell? What is that? They're probably gonna talk about it later, but... If I'm being honest, I'm kind of concerned or worried that they're going to talk about this, like, a day before the game comes out, which I feel like it's a little too late. Stuff like this needs to be talked about well before the game comes out, so people have peace of mind. They're not, they don't immediately, like, think, oh, this game is not going to be uh, as good as the previous games. You know what I mean? Yeah, we need to... I feel like it's part of the duty of the community to fix any of those preconceived notions because mm -hmm. it's in our best interests for the games to succeed as well because that means you know the developers have more resources and they can make the other games even better yeah i don't know man 
Like, I'm sorry, I'm still hung up on Big Swell. Like, what? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> Just read the thing word for word for the, for the people. Okay. Master's Vacation Pack. Use your Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth clear data to play New Game Plus in one of the three difficulty levels, Normal, Hard, and Legend. Experience the all-new story of the Big Swell and enjoy special outfits and items available only in this bundle. All right. Now, based on what you understand, um, so the community is kind of divided on this. Mm. People, some people believe, like me, for example, I feel like it's very possible for this to mean New Game Plus is going to be DLC, and other people feel like they, they think that it's going to be a different thing with whatever this big swell story is. <laughs> like, you know, this is what I mean. There's so much that is not clear. And maybe you could argue they have timing for these things, like, you know, all in due time, they're going to explain this stuff. But I feel like when you have something of this scale or this caliber, you need to explain it to people. People want to know what they're getting into. I mean, from the way that it is worded, just grammatically speaking, yeah, it would feel like as if premium adventure would, instead of being premium adventure, actually result in, like, a secondary campaign. Or kind of like if you played... Uh, near Automata, which I believe that's the way you pronounce it, mm -hmm. uh, they have kind of a situation where, okay, you play through the game once and then you get one of the endings and then you need to keep playing to get uh, more of the complete picture. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they're going with that kind of route and expanding on it, but mm -hmm. just really it could mean either of the two things. But with the way it's worded, it's kind of giving me flashbacks of the if you remember the kara quote unquote karaoke DLC in Yakuza Seven. Oh yeah, <laughs> that caused the fuss. Yeah, it it's really giving off those kinds of vibes. But c this feels like a more promising pack. It's just that we can't really interpret it properly. Yeah. Um. Like I, I don't know what to say. Maybe I'm just not an expert on this field, but I do think this is the kind of thing you need to talk about and communicate with the. You know the community about what this is going to be what to expect the whole new game plus thing with yakuza 7 did not go well um and if people are not talking about this now when the game releases and they see with their own eyes that new game plus is dlc it's gonna hell is gonna raise again basically pretty much and the last thing that we need is more controversy these days with the game specifically yeah the thing is, I am very, 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 very certain Yakuza 8 in particular is going to be worth the $70, like not even the $60, the $70. It's $70, and mm. I think it's the first RGG game to be priced at $70. I think Asian was $60, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to say for me, because up until recently we've had a different currency here, so mm -hmm. the, the, the pricing was kind of off here because of inflation, and I'm I think that Ishin was even lower than 60, at least uh, where I live, and similar thing with Kaiden. Right. Um, well, looking at Steam, it says $60. I'm assuming it just didn't change. And then if you get the Deluxe Edition, it's 70 I think. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Yakuza 8, I am very certain, even with the price increase, it's going to be worth the money. But... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but, again, this doesn't... This doesn't mean people are not going to talk about the whole New Game Plus thing, because if we technically got it with 7, then we should also have it with 8. Unless, again, the description implies that we might actually get new content with this. But even then, make that new content DLC, maybe. But New Game Plus should be part of the game. I don't know what else to say about this. I, I feel like it's just very simple, very straightforward. You know, just to do a roundup now, Mm -hmm. Between 7, the Kaito Files, Gaiden, and Infinite Wealth, we're starting to see something of a pattern with the recent releases. And I really, really, really hope this is not a sign for things to come, because at least with 7, we kind of managed to have a uh, an effect on what was going on, like a, a ripple in a river that yeah. actually did something. But with the Kaito Files, um, I don't feel like enough people talked about it, which you could argue it's not that long, barely has any side content, but I don't think that's an excuse because, oh, you don't talk about it with the Kaito Files? Well, here's Gaiden without New Game Plus. And then here's exactly. Infinite Wealth with like, you know, New Game Plus as DLC. 
And, oh, what's next with the Yakuza 9? Oh, you want new game? Well, <laughs> pay $20 <laughs> extra. I don't know. <laughs> you get new game minus, and then new game is going to be <laughs> DLC. <laughs> Oh god, how would that even work? He just... He, he can't fight? <laughs> like, he just had to run away? It, it's just going to be a mode where... It, it's basically like... Hell and Hell difficulty in Devil May Cry. Like, one hit kills you, but no one else dies in one hit. Oh my god. <laughs> please, no. <laughs> Imagine that with all the hype armor, with all the... No, please. Especially with the stats... Or, or rather, not stats. Um, status ailments, which... Oh, I'm god. not sure... I, I don't think that they... Uh, really gelled, for lack of a better word, well with the beat-em-up combat of the recent games. That's kind of the the one issue that I have with Lost Judgment and Gaiden, because mm -hmm. they don't feel like they've been balanced well enough with the rest of the combat. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm perpetually bleeding because this guy did a, you know, sideways sweep or whatever. And uh, Oh yeah, no. Um, I had a lot, of, a lot of times when I was playing Gaiden on stream, like, I'm fighting someone with a blade, and then one second passes, just one second, I'm at red health, and I'm like, wait, what happened? Yeah, exactly. Oh, bleed. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Just... It's not even a mortal one. That's the worst thing. It's like, oh, no, we just did, you know, classic swipe. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's because I'm playing a professional. I don't know. Were you playing a professional, too? Uh, Okay, I distinctly remember one example in the Colosseum against a certain lookalike that shall not be named. Mm-hmm. And I basically, I'm pretty sure I was on normal mode at that particular point. And he, I'm not sure if it was actually a mortal attack, but something happens to where I just couldn't move. And then it changed into a proper mortal. And basically I lost over half of my health from one attack and then just not being able to react with it. I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I normally play character action games very frequently, so mm -hmm. difficulty normally doesn't phase me. But if there's, again, something where the game goes from really, really easy to absurdly hard within a second, it's just kind of... It, it rarely stands in that mid-ground, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of the upgrade system, but... I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of fine-tuning that still needs to be done in that regard. Yeah, definitely. The balance of Gaiden in general, for the most part, I felt like it was okay. But uh, the bleed stat status ailment especially just felt like... Oh, nice HP you have there. Oh, what's this? 1% now. H happy gaming or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know... You, you could argue, oh, it's like a challenge or whatever. Like, I, I personally didn't think it should be taken out of the game. Maybe if they reduced it, I don't know. But um, they, they're experimenting, I think, with the status effects. Because they have also... What was it? You have the burn status effect. You have... Uh, those Fear, rage, I think. Right. Uh, were those in Lost Judgment as well? I could have sworn they were. I, I definitely remember them, because that was one of my few gripes with the game. Because it's not like... It's not that they're conceptually bad, it just feels like some of the times where it's implemented feel like they have an RPG mindset in mind in mm -hmm. regards to how how much of a... Like, it's percentage-based as opposed to HP points-based, if that makes any sense. Right, yeah. You know what I'm glad they took out? You don't get agonized anymore in Gaiden. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, that, that was yes. a pain in Lost Judgment. <laughs> it actually was. <laughs> Bloody hell. Just, yes. Thank Get you for unlocking that core memory. <laughs> I, I forgot about it until now. But yeah, like in Lost Judgment, if you get agonized, sometimes you don't even realize it until like you see the agonized animation. And man, it's painful. Like you can't run. <laughs> I think I think one like workaround is if you lock on, you can still walk, walk around normally. But you can't run. Still, so. all in all, you know, just Gaiden as a game, I, I think I still think it's one of the better experiences of Yakuza. I feel like, you know, just not delving into spoilers, the, the last chapter of this game, um, <laughs> I, I think you will almost find next to nobody telling you, oh, what is this crap? Oh my god, it's it's flawless. Like, what are we talking narrative, what are we talking gameplay, what are we talking the fight set pieces, the OSTs, the choreography, just, it's... Th this might just be a tiny bit of recent bias, but I've revisited it many, many times, but... To me, that's the strongest that any Yakuza game had ended. 
no, to your date. I, yeah, I definitely, I can see why. Um, it's just a very powerful um, outro to an otherwise um, amazing game. And I, I always say this as well, it just feels like Yakuza 6 Part 2. Um, a lot of people didn't enjoy Yakuza 6, and they felt like... Really? They, well, maybe not nowadays so much, but when it came out, it got heavy criticism. Uh, for Well, th there's multiple reasons as to why, but the story was one of yeah. them. So, picture this. The game was not on anything except PlayStation 4. Now, on the PlayStation 4, uh, this was like, when, 2016, I think? Yeah, it should be 16, mm -hmm. in Japan. Um, two years later, 2018, came out uh, everywhere else. But the game, not gonna lie, kind of ran terribly on the PS4. Uh, think Dead Souls performance, give or take. <laughs> give I've, or take. I've heard horror stories about it, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's not... It, it's not unbearable for me, but I think a lot of people didn't like the performance at the time. And there was also a lack of... Uh, what's, it, what's it called again? V-Sync? Yeah, I think it's V-Sync, yeah. Ah. So, so you would see a lot of tearing, a lot of it. Um, right, right. So, visually speaking, the game did look good at times, but also, when you, when you have these two things in mind, it looks a bit off sometimes. And then, you know, setting that aside, coming from Yakuza, f I think, yeah, f from Yakuza 5 at the time, uh, assuming you're playing in 2016, importing the game, <clears throat> uh, you know how big Yakuza 5 is, and then you go to Yakuza 6, it's like, wait, what happened? Because... Uh, I... Because, <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't think Yakuza 6 is a bad game. Maybe it's it could have used more that uh, maybe they didn't have the time to implement. But it definitely is way less than whatever 5 brought. And, you know, I, I personally think 5 is a little bloated, but it definitely had way more content than 6 ever hoped to have. Five characters, everyone has sub-stories. They all have side stories, even, like, separate from sub-stories. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Psyjima's hunting minigame. Um, <laughs> and then comparing uh. that to just the, the the very bare bones stuff in 6. Like, for example, I'm going to ask you this directly. Do you like the baseball coaching thing in, in 6? No. And I love the game. Like, or not baseball, no, I despise baseball as a minigame in all of Yakuza. Oh, but do you? <laughs> I can't... St and yeah, this is probably because I did approach it as a completionist, but I... The only one that I actually enjoyed was Shinada's side story in 5. Oh, okay, okay. And that's because they gave me a shrimp bat, which is basically a cheat mode, and I love that. Thank you, Shinada. I, yeah, now that you mention it, you did mention this in that video for the Platinums. Yeah, j just, you know, compare that... For example, that baseball minigame in 6, and then you also have the drinking bar, which... <sighs> I think you had to unlock it in a very specific way, so a lot of people missed that. And, you know, I think to this day, I still haven't done all of the sub-stories in 6. Just really? because... Yeah, just because... Well, 6 did something, which was... You could fight the secret boss without doing all the sub-stories. And to me, that was like, okay, I'm gonna do these sub-stories, and I'll just fight him, and I'll be done. Right, um, right. But yeah, I feel like we're kind of going off topic. I'm sorry about that. No, um, no, by all means. I mean, as far as I, as far as I'm concerned, we can even go on a Yakuza Five tangent because, dear God, you, we can always talk about that game. Hey, listen, we don't want people in the comment section to start unsubscribing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if there is any hate to be directed, please direct it at me because I'm still working on my narrative hey, deconstruction hey. of the game, and dear God, it's gonna take a while. Oh shit! Are you really working on something like that? Oh man. Care to guess how long the script is? Let's see. Twenty thousand words. More. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Thirty thousand. I'm not even finished with it, and it's already over 40,000 words. Oh my god. With, with my speed of narration, that's a four-hour video, and this is just talking about the story of the game. The gameplay is barely mentioned, I'm just deconstructing the story. Oh my god, I I'm trying to look for my iceberg video and see how long that was. Hold on. Oh dear god. The iceberg was... 20... 24,000. 
amazing video, by the way. Rewatched that many times. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, really appreciate that. So that was <laughs> twenty four thousand. Okay, maybe hold on. Let me check. Uh... Oh, I think I deleted the other one. I was gonna check the video for Yakuza six and seven, the other gigantic Ooh. one. Another great one, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I lost the script to that too, unfortunately. But I think that one actually went over forty thousand, if I remember right. But yeah, that, that's uh, that alone should tell you just how much of an undertaking it is. Because no. if you want <laughs> yeah. hardcore Yakuza five fans, fans, fans to take it seriously, you need to build your case, and this game really makes a hard time to do it if you don't overanalyze everything. I don't know what to say except uh, good luck. Because <laughs> I'll definitely need it. <laughs> Oh my god, um, I, you know, I sometimes think of making discussion videos about stories and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest one being, of course, the one that I just mentioned with 6 and 7. <laughs> um, and even then, it wasn't really discussion videos so much as it was just kind of retelling the story, stopping every now and then to mention points where people didn't like so much. Um, but you said they were doing a full analysis of 5, right? Yes, and to kind of give a bit of behind the scenes context because again i'll probably i won't probably be done with it for another year at least really oh my I, god i mean part of it is because i'll the kind of irl i will be a bit more busy in the next six months but ah, right. the, as far as the actual script goes it to kind of explain why the issue is flawed oh sorry not the issue the pacing is mm -hmm. flawed from a conceptual standpoint you not only do you need to analyze specific um, comments that were made by either Yokoyama-san or Nagoshi-san or anyone who's working at the game mm -hmm. at that particular point in time, but you also need to kind of analyze the story of each individual protagonist up until that point. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of elements that kind of reiterate on things that were done in Yakuza 4, mm -hmm. except it repeats them unnecessarily and kind of... Ironically enough, it repeats certain points from 4, but mm -hmm. then contradicts the character development that was achieved in 4. Right, right. So, again, to kind of make sense as to why, for example, Saijima's part was completely unnecessary <laughs> from the way that it was executed, you need to say, okay, this was his development in 4, this is why this particular choice that he made could have been executed better, this is why these characters uh, aren't relevant to him, but actually to a completely different character you don't even play as, and blah 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 blah. And basically, you get a five-hour video without actually saying much about it. I said, you can't do this to Saijima fans. You can't. You I mean, look, he's a he's a great character, but man, did they do him dirty in that game. That's that's the big issue, aren't it? I love Saijima in four. <laughs> Don't count one particular scene. He genuinely had a great character development. Yeah. And then five said, yeah, let's not do that anymore. Right, man. It's interesting to hear just people talking about five because. <sighs> Where, like, what do I even say about that game? Um, I feel like maybe there's a misconception about it, because a lot of the time on my streams, people might come in at random and hear me meme about Yakuza 5, and they think I hate it. I don't hate Yakuza oh, no, 5. No, no. Uh, th there's not a single game, Yakuza game, that I hate. Um, but there are games that I have gripes with more than other games, and, you know, that includes games like Yakuza 5, Yakuza 2. At the end of the day, like, my opinion, anyone's opinion, really, shouldn't matter to anyone. We ha we try to have discussions, we talk about games, but there's no reason you should be like, Oh, like, man, how could this fucking Devil Leon 7 guy say this about my favorite game? Like, I'm just a guy, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, no different from you, uh, just minding my own business talking about Yakuza as you do and <laughs> it's just you know like I have preferences everybody has preferences and again I think Yakuza 5 is a great game um, it has a lot of good about it just you know the amount of content all the characters all the soundtracks the mini games like there's a lot there's a lot of good stuff about it but yeah, yeah um, I mean, to to kind of, okay, hopefully to conclude this segment so that, yes. you know, people don't keep raging in the comments. Yes, yes, so I'll please. say this. The, the main reason why I'm so critical of Five Story is that it comes so close conceptually to being a masterpiece. And mm -hmm. mind you, I wouldn't put Yakuza 5 in my top 10 favorite games. And believe me when I say this, when this game is at its best, it's untouchable. It's genuinely the best that RGG has ever made. Mm-hmm. But there's so many points 
where, for example, the rooftop scene. That type <laughs> of stuff. There's so many scenes like that that are just bad. There's so many points that don't oh. hit that high to where everything that the game does well will unfortunately be dragged out. And part of that is because there's so much in there. Even though it, gameplay wise, it's heaven, genuinely. But mm -hmm. narratively, it just it doesn't justify that amount of characters that just turn into a singular lesson for mm -hmm. a character to learn from, and mm -hmm. that's it. But yeah, when it's when it's at its best, again, it's untouchable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think just you know, I know we should probably just move on already. But but I just want to say, <laughs> moral of the story. Um, like, how do I say this? Try, just try to meme on every game, honestly. Because, like, if you care about what people have to say about everything, you, you're the only one that's going to be bothered, really. Um, yeah. Try to have, you know, discussions. If someone doesn't like a game, hey, fair enough. Like, for example, I love 7. A lot of people don't like 7. And that that's fair enough. That's where, like, the discussion ends. Unless they want to talk about yeah. something. Like, you know, how they enjoyed the soundtrack but didn't enjoy something else. And then maybe I talk about something I enjoyed and something else I didn't enjoy about the game. And, you know, it's just completely possible to have conversations like that without having to resort to, like, I don't know, saying someone's favorite game sucks because they have an opinion that you don't agree with. And, you know, so on and so forth. <laughs> Um, that's one of the good things about talking this out with a fellow content creator because I feel like you, you because of the way that you approach your content you're kind of accustomed to not taking something like this uh, on a personal level because it's just again you've spent an exorbitant time with the games and there are certain things that resonated with you more strongly than others so having that comparison is more about the conversation the educational aspect kind of mm -hmm. seeing a another person's perspective mm -hmm. as opposed to my game is better we 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 or whatever yeah yeah because like if you if you have that mentality you're never going to get anywhere with discussions um exactly you you know you want to have a level-headed conversation where you can rationally say what you don't like about the game and then the other person also rationally says what they like or don't like about a game and that's very possible to do um and <laughs> exactly. yeah like just doing that you'll have a conversation but yeah anyway um Let's move on to the next topic. Holy shit, we're at an hour and a half. Um, nice. <laughs> so, the next topic is going to be the last one for today, but it's a very uh, hot topic, let's say, especially as mm. of lately. The English dub, especially that of uh, uh, Kiryu. Uh, but we want to talk about the English dub in general. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, um, the recording process... And what goes into it, I'm not as knowledgeable about it as much as Kokidoni is. I think he has a bit of a background with the uh, studio work, so I'm gonna have him talk about this. Go ahead. Thank you. So, just for a bit of context, as I do a lot of music on the side, I have been fortunate enough to spend a lot of time in either makeshift recording studios from friends that would record their own uh, kind of garage band demos and all that stuff to proper studios and oddly enough there was a lot of overlap that I've seen between uh, let's say vocalists trying to record specific lines versus certain voiceover act artists that I would see just trying to dub over certain aspects and when it comes to this dub in particular where people like to kind of push all of the blame or praise onto a single person I feel like that's undermining the complexity of the actual process, because if you want to have a good performance, not only do you need a good voice actor, but you need the right script, you need to have a good voice director to get the actual, the best performances out of a talented voice actor. You need to have an audio engineer that will mix all of it so that the actual, you know, the points where someone belts out a very emotional line hit right with the atmosphere of the scene and the music and everything. And assuming that you have, for example, a setup in a studio where multiple voice actors can kind of record at the same time and bounce off of one another, the chemistry between them will also affect the performance. So to say that just even one role could be saved or ruined by the talents of a single individual is kind of 
Again, it's a very tunnel vision way of looking at it. And especially when you look at characters from the Yakuza series, because they're inherently so, well, deliberately designed to be emotionally complex, to where even if you have an incredibly ta talented voice actor, that doesn't mean that he will do the, the type of perspective on the character that you see, that he, that he will appeal to the emotional aspect or just kind of the expression that you resonate with. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with Young in particular, to kind of stop tiptoeing around the issue, mm -hmm. I would like to say that he was probably given an impossible role to play. Right. I see what you mean with that, yeah. I said this on a stream once, but um, replacing Daryl Corillo and living up to uh, Takaya Kuruda, I don't think there's going to be a single person that uh, will do it for everyone unanimously. It's such exactly. a it's such a like a big role to kind of try and fulfill, and I feel like no matter who you bring, for the most part, there are going to be a lot of people that have a problem with this because you're either very used to hearing uh, Kuroda at this point, just you know acting as Kiryu, um, iconic voice. We've known him for like if you've been like a fan for a while, like 15 years now, voicing the character, if not more. Um, and then there's Daryl, who, uh, you know, admittedly he didn't voice Kiryu as long as Koroda did, but there's that nostalgia factor with him that stemmed from Yakuza 1, which was the first game that he voiced Kiryu in, and then he didn't come back until Yakuza 7, where he reprised the role, and it was just amazing to hear him again, for me personally, as someone who grew up with uh, the English Kiryu in uh, Yakuza 1 original and um, just I feel like I can say this safely from my perspective but pretty much anyone they would bring in this role at this point is gonna feel off at least for some time and yeah. and Young is definitely um, in that position unfortunately um, but I gotta say this started as oh Young does not fit this role like, you know, just the discussion within the community. To something that I... I fucking despise. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm sure this happened to you as well, uh, Gokudoni. The other day, I went on YouTube. And what do I find in my feed? Young, yeah, ruined Yakuza with his voice. Come on. Are we serious? Like... Wait, wait, wait. Now that you've said that, I want to immediately throw something out. Yes. That's not the right way to verbally phrase it, but anyway. Uh -huh. Any time I was recommended one of those videos, and dear God, there have been so many of them. I couldn't within believe the how first many there minute, are. Within the first minute or so, whoever did the video literally said, I don't play Yakuza. Not even Yakuza, <laughs> Yakuza. <laughs> they don't play the games, they don't play dubs in their games, and yet, they go out of their way to take a piss on, like... That alone, if you're that adamant for views and you're calling someone sad over the way that they acted towards the hate that they got, pot, kettle, black. Drop mic. You know, people say I do clickbait, but then when I look at those videos, I'm like, okay, I think I feel better about myself now. Please, like... I mean, there's a difference. There's a difference between making a quality thumbnail, or rather, a clickbaity thumbnail for a quality video which I would argue that both of us do, because, you know, you kind of have to reach an audience in some way, and that's kind of the necessary evil yeah. at this point. Yeah. Versus what they do. <laughs> like, the, the thing with the video that I was talking about, it's not just clickbait. It's... Just, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's bullshit. Like, are you yeah. telling me a singular <laughs> voice of a singular character? Now, mind you, I know it's a main character and all that. Are you telling me a singular voice of a character ruined the whole fucking game? Like, get out of here. You probably hate Yong Ye already before the whole thing even happened, so... Your opinion is invalid. <laughs> Shut the hell up. That, that's all there is to it. Um, oh, I mean, really, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah... Th that's what I was getting at first. This started as a thing in the community where, oh, you know, we don't think Young Give fits Kiryu, but then just, like, all these... I, I don't want to say outsiders, that makes it sound like we're a cult. Maybe we are, but... <laughs> but, like, yeah, all these people, like, from outside the community, just kind of came in and they're like, oh, look, Young, I hate this guy, let me make a video on him <laughs> while I'm at it. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it's, lit it's literally that. They're they're locusts. That That's the only way to look at it. They seek out the drama in any given community and go out on it. Whereas, whenever I've personally spoken to anyone about this topic, either on Twitter or whatever, most of the people were just like, look, I understand what he's trying to do, but he, in my opinion, doesn't fit the character. And whenever it's usually people being that, you know, profuse, that, that's that many insults being thrown. <laughs> Most of the time, there are people that are very new to the community mm -hmm. or just, again, just want to get mad at something because it's the popular thing to do. This yeah. isn't to say that there aren't, you know, objective things to talk about, about, you know, how to improve a performance. But to say that the man can't act is just... I, I feel like these people don't know what a good actor would sound like if they genuinely think that. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there is a role Young played. Um, a very particular role in actually another Legend of Heroes game. So, Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie, he plays a character called Arius. And Arius mm -hmm. is very well voiced by Yongi. I thought, like, um, they found a good fit. And I actually couldn't believe it was Yongi. I was like, wait, Yongi voiced right? this guy? Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> he sounded, like, in my opinion, he sounded nothing like him. And that kind of goes to show that the problem is not with the voice actor. It's with the direction, because pretty much, because a lot of yeah. the time in the demo as well, I felt like the voice really changes from one scene to another. It sounds just different from like one cutscene to another, and then of course the karaoke. Um, oh, the karaoke that can be its separate topic because again, <laughs> I don't think that's an issue. Again, from a musical background, it's not that he. Okay, I have to say this. I'm sorry for interrupting it. No, but... go for it. Go for it. When I hear someone say. Oh, he sings so bad, not even autotune can fix it. That right there tells me you have never in your life worked on Pro Tools or any kind of audio editing software, because within the first hour of that, people have fixed the performance to be on, in key and in tune. It's not a question of, oh, the person sings so poorly that you can't fix it. No, any audio engineer worth his salt can do something with it. But there's a difference between balancing a performance to fit, let's say, an electronic track. For example, if they used this type of vocal take on something like Shin Ichizu Samurai, you wouldn't have noticed that it sounds quote-unquote off. Mm -hmm. But if you balance it into a predominantly rock-slash-metal sound from the 80s, yeah, it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb, which mm -hmm. maybe they did it for, to kind of add onto the goofy aspect, which I think was just stylistically a poor choice. But again, we've heard some of his dry takes when he sung Bakamitai with uh, Kuroda-san at the panel, and there's some of the other takes that were done. Like, there's there's a difference between not knowing how to sing something and then mm -hmm. someone not uh, adequately implementing it for what a song is trying to do conceptually, mm -hmm. if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. Right, right. Yeah. Um, there's something else as well about uh, Yonggye, which is... Uh, there's a very particular topic, which is... Do you remember when he did the video on Yakuza 7's New Game Plus? Um, I wasn't aware that he did that one, honestly. I think... Hold on, let me just look it up to be sure. I think he did one when that happened. Yeah, so he actually made a video three years ago now. I've seen people giving him shit because he's not talking about the whole Yakuza 8 deal, which, you know... I, un I understand why people are upset about that, but at the same time, this is probably something most people don't even know exists, but I, I imagine he's under NDA. For those who don't know, non-disclosure agreement. So <laughs> what that means is if he's working on something Yakuza related, then he kind of has to watch what he says, which you might be saying, oh, shill, like, how could he do this? Listen, if you have a job, you have to follow the rules. That's all there is to it. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say about this, because, yeah, like, you might, again, just not like him for that reason, and, you know, to each their own, but this is very likely the reason why he didn't make a video about that, which I imagine otherwise he probably would have. And then, I, and even then, um, we need more details about, you know, the whole New Game Plus thing, because, yeah, we do have the description that we covered earlier, but we really need more, you know, just specifics to uh, go with to actually know that new game plus is going to be dlc again i don't watch young gear really but um just like gokudoni i've seen a lot of just insane 
unwarranted like toxicity towards him. And I know someone might be thinking, oh, we're not being toxic, we're just criticizing. Okay, fair enough, maybe you're criticizing. But have you seen all the other people that are actually being toxic? Uh, there's a post yeah. on my Twitter that I actually retweeted, I think, at some point. Did I? Yeah, I think I retweeted the post. Where, th like, th there was all sorts of colorful language, uh, racism, to blah, blah, blah. To put it lightly, yeah. Yeah, to put it lightly. Uh, it was very uh, hardcore, let's say. Um, so, maybe some of you there might think he's not facing toxicity. And, like... From your point of view, you're just seeing the criticism that you're telling him, and maybe a couple of your friends are telling him. But the guy is actually going through everything, like criticism and toxicity. I just can't imagine being in this position right now. It must be <laughs> stressful as hell. I mean, honestly, that's kind of the most disheartening things about it, because... It is. Now, personally, I did... Like, I do occasionally watch his content, just because that's mm -hmm. kind of the easiest way for me to get into any gaming news mm -hmm. but specifically when it came to uh, one video that he made about hanging out with the people at RGG and how he met Kuroda-san and he gave him you know that bracelet that yeah. he now uh, wears anytime that he voices Kiryu mm -hmm. I feel like even if you can't stand the guy it it's pretty obvious that he genuinely couldn't be happier about the role that's given not because of the you know fame that it could carry but because the the emotional connection that's made with these people makes the creative process feel so much more meaningful mm -hmm. to where i i the only uh, i just don't want him to have to have a negative toll on his mental health because of this or think any lesser of the community because mm -hmm. in at least from my perspective most of the people again who were being childish about it weren't parts of the community even if they would yeah. occasionally yeah. parade as if they were mm -hmm. I don't know, just... No... I... Whether I, or not you dislike him or hate him, just... Remember that he genuinely is a human being. That's kind of the point of it. Yeah, having said, said everything we ju just said, both me and Gokudoni... Like, we don't want people to think, Oh, look at these two Yakuza YouTubers defending this random voice actor that nobody likes. I <laughs> don't think I like the performance. Uh, maybe I said Same. it before. But if I didn't say it before, I'm saying it now. I don't think I like the performance uh, of Young, unfortunately, with, for Kiryu. I think Daryl would have done a better job. But, you know, Young got a role, and I can't blame him for being ex excited for the role. Um, and I've seen some people saying, oh, he could have turned it down because he, he would have known, like, he wouldn't fit or something like that. And it's like, I don't know. I think you need to get real a little bit. If he gets such a big job, I think you would be an idiot to waste it. Um, and I think a lot of people are blaming Young specifically and solely, and nobody else, when I think the voice direction has a lot to do with what's going on. Yeah, because it, it's, again, like we said, it's it's such a complex process to where even if it turned out to be the greatest voice acting gig ever, you couldn't put all of the praise onto one single individual, because everyone cooperating here, especially with all of the Yakuza dubs, I would say, even... Even the first one, to a lesser extent, because, you know, audio quality and all. But I feel like the reason why they're looked at in such a positive manner is because the the chemistry was just there. The people really clicked, and if any of those aspects just didn't work, you would have felt it mm -hmm. through the performances. But because you have such a positive environment, it's translated into the performances being better. So... I don't know, it's just... I, I feel really, really particular about these dubs, because I know some of the... I've followed some of the voice actors for some of their other projects, like, for example, Chrisman mm -hmm. Freeman. Mm -hmm. So when you know the psychology behind it, and some of the details of the behind-the-scenes process, it, it makes you feel... It makes it seem a lot more personal, even if you mm -hmm. personally haven't worked in the industry. Right. Right. I don't know how to say this. Like, I get it's because Kiryu is like a main character, an iconic character that so many people are used to um, hearing in a certain way. But also, I don't know, I feel like th there is, if we really want to look at questionable voice acting or like non-ideal voices, th there's quite a few. And oh, Young, yeah. Young just getting all of that 
uh, criticism. This might sound harsh. Maybe people dislike him because he's over the moon about the role, saying, oh, yo, I'm Kiryu. Kiryu, like, does this and that on his videos. And, <laughs> you know, he, he's done quite a bit of that. And I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I, I think when people say they hate that, I get where they're coming from. But I still think that's no reason to, you know, just potentially harass the guy. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, did he go overboard? Yeah. But at the same time, like, if you were offered that gig, I'm pretty sure that the only reason why you see him flipping out about it is because he has a social platform. Otherwise, it would be his neighbors that would see him being like, man, I'm Kiryu, hell yeah! And you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my friends told me that, uh, like, for example, in uh, Kaiji Tang's case, or uh, Greg Chun's case, when they got their mm -hmm. roles, um, it was, there was like a contrast between them and, for example, Young, where, again, um, he was talking a lot about it, and just speaking as Kiryu, which I think is what annoyed some people. I mean, mm. You know, people have their reasons for all of what's going on, and I think at the end of the day, you just you want to make you want to make sure you remember that he's a human being, like Gokudoni said. Um, <laughs> you can very much direct criticism, feedback, without you know getting to the guy. Um, yeah, just build your case in a civilized manner. We're not apes, for the love of God. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bottom line, I guess, is just. Um, why do most of you complain when, when you're gonna use the Japanese voices? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say it. Oh. <laughs> I had to say it, but hey. I mean... I mean, again, it is. that That's literally what it's gonna be, because... <laughs> I mean, I've heard the same type, because I follow a lot of anime in my spare time, and I would occasionally hear some of this stuff like, Oh, he doesn't fit this character, because the Japanese voice actor sounded this way, blah blah blah. Without going into the cultural aspect of it, and I don't mean like, oh, only, only a Japanese person can voice this type of character. Mm -hmm. No, I distinctly mean cultural influences and how the identity of the country they've grown up in will inevitably have a bit of an influence on how you express yourself verbally, physically, and in turn, how you uh, project your voice, among other things. Mm -hmm. It reaches a point where even if these voice actors had the ability to replicate Kuroda-san's style, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have come off as genuine, so it's better not to try it at all. The reason why Daryl did such a great job is because, despite having a deep voice, he didn't replicate Kuroda's performance. There's a distinctly different approach, a different part of Kiryu's character that he drew from, at least mm -hmm. from my perspective. Yeah. And that's why it stands out so well. Mm -hmm. And I would say that Young tried to do the same thing, like, his take isn't Daryl's or Kuroda's, it's his. Mm -hmm. Am I a fan of it? Personally, no, but I can, you know, I can admire the effort at the very least. Yeah, same. And also, um, th another thing about Daryl is that, yeah, he did have his own um, approach to it, but I also feel like nostalgia is a big, big, big factor to a lot of people. Uh, they yes. like him just because, you know, they heard him uh, all the those years ago, or just, you know, they, they, they heard a certain Kiryu, and they expected probably a similar approach, and they got something yeah. unexpected. Um, I, I mean, actually... I, get it. I yeah. have a <laughs> few... No, just gonna finish real quick, sorry. Um, oh, by all means. I have a few friends who actually don't like Daryl. Uh, they think his voice is pretty weird, especially in 7, which, hey, fair enough. I like Daryl, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, what did you want to say? I mean, basically that. I was just gonna... To kind of de uh, deviate from defending slash offending people or whatever to kind of give a bit of a spotlight to Daryl because I have no idea how he wound up getting the role but something about his voice is just so unique yeah and definitely I don't know like I definitely understand the nostalgia aspect from it even though I haven't l literally grown up with the voice but mm -hmm. there's something there to where I don't know yeah it kind of does feel empty without him being there but that's more of a testament to how well he did something as opposed to how well someone else could try and replicate it, you know? Right, right, yeah. Um, so, are you ready to lose subscribers over what we just said? <laughs> Thankful, I would like to think that the people who subscribe to my channel are... Because I don't do the standards, like, comment and subscribe at every video. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Be because of that, that's kind of a... A conscious decision from mine because then I feel like the people who do subscribe are there because 
oh, you know, it's cool stuff. I didn't have to nudge them into it. Yeah. So if I lose any, then, you know, that's that's their thing. They probably weren't there for the for the actual person behind the content. They were there for, you know, yeah. if you catch my drift. Yeah, yeah. no, I get you. I kind of did the same thing for a while where I just make a video. I push it out. If people like it, good. If they subscribe, good. But yeah, <laughs> I think we're almost at two hours now. So I think we should just... Uh, conclude everything uh, we just said on a closing note i want to say even though a lot of what we talked about today might have come off as negative that's not the intention um it's mainly just to have like an outlet to talk to a fellow content creator about some you know stuff with mixed reception as of uh, recently and to see what uh, he thinks and see if we share those concerns and what could possibly be done about them if if there's anything um, and to also kind of invoke discussion within the community, not arguments, no name calling, discussion. And yeah, I think, you know, despite everything that's happening, like with New Game Plus, for example, Gaiden is an amazing game. I think for a lot of people, it's, it hits a lot of notes, right? Um, oh, definitely. And I just hope that, you know, may maybe there's still a slim chance that they can mend the New Game Plus situation. And I mean, Infinite Wealth, that looks like a game of the freaking century. I can't wait for that Indeed. game. Like, I'm still, my head is still spinning over everything that was shown. Like, even not talking about the narrative, which in itself, with the amount of, like, Dio voices a prominent villain there. That already was a selling point for me. Oh, a yeah. Very big one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I loved Gaiden, and I think Infinite Wealth is going to be an awesome game. But we wanted to talk about this, so hopefully, if someone at RGG watches this, uh, they have something of an idea to take about what fans have to say, and yeah. Um, anything you want to add, Gokudoni? Just remember that this is not about I don't like this game. Yes, it's, thank you. I yeah. love this game, and I want it to keep getting better. Yes, and the ways we talked about is potentially ways for it to get better. Yeah, um, hopefully. <laughs> now, I have one more important question, Gokudoni, if you don't mind me asking. By all means. When is going to be the face reveal? <laughs> <laughs> You know, funny you should mention it, because I thought, like, I considered doing it here, but the thing is that my actual camera just looks like it's... Have you played the first Slender game? Yes, I have. <laughs> That's the amount of static we're talking about, because I only have a camera on my uh, laptop. Right. And I thought, like, okay, what does it look like? Oh, freaking hell, I look like a crack addict. You yeah, can't no, see no, shit here. I, I didn't want to pressure you as well, because, you know... Uh, if I were to tell you, okay, we're gonna do a video, both you and me, I feel like that would have kind of made the situation a bit more unorganized and potentially caused, you know, a hiccup or two. So I was like, no, we don't need, like, a, a, a video call for both of us. This could work. Tell you what, I'll do a face reveal when you go offline. That way, hopefully, everything's bounced out. Oh, okay. Exclusive face reveal from Gokudoni. <laughs> I'm thoroughly average, by the way. No one should get any positive or negative thoughts it's just eh, i'm a slav it's basically what you think it is you know for a while people told me like hey you should like you know reveal your face and like commentate on stuff uh it's a way to get more people to watch your stuff and at first i was like nah like you know like who would who would want to look at this average freaking arab dude who just uh plays games all day um <laughs> and i still think you know you don't need to reveal your face to get anywhere, but I do think for some people it might help them connect to you in a way. Uh, just having, yeah. just having, you know, a person. For example, if you're making a video, it might feel like you know they're looking at somebody that they're having a conversation with, and they like that aspect of it. But that's not to say you should uh, stress uh, making a face reveal. Like do things at your own pace and see how they work out. I appreciate it. Funny you should mention it, because well, technically. On my Twitter, I do have, because uh, I occasionally do guitar covers. So technically, I've I haven't shown my face, but like, like torso and all that stuff and the actual guitar, you could see. And I've thought of actually implementing a face cam, but the thing is, with with the content that I currently do, which a lot of times is character analyses for a lot of you know depressing plot points. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a face cam in the corner when I talk about? This guy grew up as an orphan. He lost his entire family. <laughs> and you just see this random dude with long hair being like, Oh my god, it was so tragic. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you cried. <laughs> that 
To me, it would detract from the point I'm trying to raise, at least with the content I currently make. Yeah, so, no. So that's kind of impractical, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, you don't need face cams in every single video. There's absolutely uh, a lot of scenarios where you don't need one, and it works better that way. Again, like analysis of videos, yeah, it works perfectly there because people are looking at, you know, whatever footage you have of the game and whatever visual aid you also put uh, to enhance the experience. And yeah, just there's a lot of different ways you could do stuff. And the way you currently do stuff is uh, pretty effective. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, this has been a wonderful, wonderful little chat. Little, little, yeah, little chat. Uh, Mr. Goku. For us, it is little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this has been awesome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Kokotoni. Fellas, I'm gonna leave the link to his channel in the description. Check it out if you want more Yakuza videos, especially analysis videos. Uh, help, a, help a fella out. Go check out his channel. But yeah, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Um, and hopefully we can do more of this stuff sometime down the line. Um, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Whenever you have the time, by all means, even if it's just a Mahjong round, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the invitation so much.